This is the plaintiff, Marvin Weiser. He says he rented an apartment to the defendants, and when they left, it was a filthy trash mess. He was shocked. What they did to his place wasn't nice, and it wasn't right, so he's suing for the $1,700 he needs to clean the place up. These are the defendants, Katie Club and David Parsons. Katie says living this guy's building was a nightmare. They got bed bones from an upstairs neighbor. Their cat got sick and died from licking toxic water that was leaking into the apartment. And if the plaintiff thinks he's owed money, he is sorely mistaken. They're accused of trashing the joint. The defendants have filed a countersuit for $3,220.05, the cost to cremate their cat and for their security. All parties, please raise your right hands. Welcome back to the People's Court. Next case on the docket, the plaintiff says he rented his once beautiful apartment to the defendant who trashed the place and left it a filthy mess, and he wants money to clean it up. But the defendant says they got bed bugs in the plaintiff's infested place, and they owe nothing. It's the case of you let the bed bugs bite. Thank you, Douglas. You're welcome. Okay, Mr. Weitzer, you're suing your former tenants, Ms. Club and Mr. Parsons, for $1,700 in unpaid rent for September and October. 500 of that was to clean the apartment. 1,200 in rent, 500 to clean. You have a counterclaim against him for $1,020 for the cremation of your cat and 2200 that you had to put as a security deposit in your new place and you feel he should pay you. Okay, let me hear you first from you, Mr. Weiser. What's going on? Uh, the uh, David Parsons and Katie never gave uh, the 60-day notice required by lease. I got actually a uh, two-day notice. I got notice on August the 28th that they were leaving on September 1st. Were they in the middle of a lease or were they in a month-to-month -month at that juncture? They're on a year-to-year -year lease. Okay, so there's a written lease covering this time? Correct. Let me hear from you. You guys end up leaving, why? Because there were leaks everywhere coming from the ceiling, from the windows. There was broken out windows, holes in the walls. It was just a mess all around. When did you tell him I'm moving out on next day? When did you tell him that? We told him, I told him August 28th that we were moving out September 2nd. We had gotten COVID. Um, and we were moving slow to be moving out. I told him that, I told him prior to that over the phone that we were moving out um, the beginning of August. We had to like leave that apartment. I was like getting physically ill. There was mold everywhere. Like in the lease, it even states if, the, if he's not- The leak not... was causing the outlets to spark, like which was right over our bed. There's mold, there's like literally every reason we had to get out of there. Okay, I see these texts from August 16th. Ceiling is still continuously dripping right over our bed. This has been going on for weeks. When is it going to be addressed? Also, it is about to cause a fire. Again, this is like the fifth time I'm telling you, please fix this. And his answer is, when I checked the ceiling, it was not dripping. But since you didn't want anybody in your apartment while you were away and it wasn't dripping, I did not do anything. These are texts between you, Katie? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Plumber never showed up. We set up a time on Tuesday, reached out to him, no return. We took a time off work. Cannot leave the house for more than a few hours because a faucet leaks and overflows because of the clog. I'm going to have to call a plumber here and take the cost off the rent for September since we already paid July and August. <laughs> yeah, I don't think he's going to answer. He told me he hates coming here to work and hopes you find a different plumber. Kind of figured he wasn't going to respond. Yeah, we couldn't find any any um, company we reached out to on our own to try to get to fix because these problems. Because we're renters, so they right. couldn't do it. Because well, it doesn't matter. Issues. You just you would have to pay. You can't obligate the the landlord, but you can you can you can hire a plumber and then take it off the rent, just like you said you would. Um, right. We tried. Um, the plumbers that we had actually reached out to all both said that it was because we were renting that the landlord would have to approve it and he wouldn't right. approve us paying for it unless he got um, his own um, <clears throat> price for it. Or When did he tell you that? Friday when we <clears throat> spoke and made an appointment, he said he hates coming here. It's a nightmare. We told you last year about the leak in the bedroom window too that needs to be fixed because it's electrical outlets. Now it's worse. It's still not fixed. We haven't been able to leave the house for more than two hours going on two weeks now. Now, what is this a picture of that you're sending him? 
That is the ceiling. Um, a leak that popped up. I assumed it was from the air, air conditioner from the upstairs neighbor coming into where the windows leak and it came into there. He thought it was from the carpet. Um, he got the carpet cleaned upstairs uh, and they said it was wet for like 10 days. And that's what he said that that was probably from. I can't imagine that carpet cleaning would cause that. That's going to be some kind of right. plumbing disaster. July 20th, yes. you notify him about it. And a leak above our bed wouldn't be from the roof if there's somebody above us. So that right. didn't make any sense. <laughs> Did that get patched and then this happened again? No, no it, it never got patched. patched What's chemical water? What do you mean by that? It was some type of like orangish brown liquid that was dripping from that. So we weren't sure what type of what it was. So we just put that down. Some, some type of chemical had a weird smell to it. It smelled chemically. I mean, this is an emergency, you know, when when, right. when they're telling right. you, I'm, I'm talking now to Mr. White, so when they're telling you, look, it's two in the morning, this thing is leaking on us, and they're showing you pictures and sending it to you, this is how they woke up at two in the morning, every corner of this apartment is leaking, your answer is I'll be there yep. Thursday? That's like three days later, Mr. White, sir. How is that appropriate? When I was told about the leak in the ceiling, I went up to the third floor the same day. Do you, did you hear what I just read, the, the text? You, you, you say it's the same day, and I just read something that shows that your answer to them when they're showing you pictures of the leaks is that you'll be there three days later. That's, I'm showing you your own words to them. I'll be there Thursday, and these texts are on a Monday. How is it appropriate for a landlord to respond to emergency leaks? Uh, I'll be there and take a look at it three days later. Not, I'm sending a plumber, he'll be there in an hour. Can you guys open? You know, or how is it appropriate? How is the way you're handling it appropriate? Let me answer my own question, because it was rhetorical. That is not an appropriate response for a landlord. All right, now your premise, I presume, uh, Ms. Oh, talk to me about the cat. <laughs> I'm going to start crying if I talk about the cat. Uh, like the leaks, he was poisoned from licking the chemicals. What evidence do you have of that? Uh, on the, um, I guess the vet would, the vet bill would be the evidence that he was cremated. Right, that um, just tells me your cat given, died, which I'm very right, sorry about. Um, that doesn't tell a, me your cat was poisoned by carpet chemicals or anything that right. would have... Right. So do you have any evidence your cat was poisoned? Um, just from the vet telling me that he didn't have felt and he was internally bleeding from being poisoned. Do you but have, do have, you have a letter from, from the vet? Because otherwise no, that's, hearsay. Not, that's, ju that's just hearsay. That's just... Right. But um, right. so you don't have any evidence that the cat was poisoned? No. no okay. No. So uh, you're also suing for a security deposit you had to place in a new apartment. Why would he be right. responsible for paying that? Because we had to move out on such short notice and had to... Get what short notice was to... the notice you gave him? You didn't give him any notice. Well, well yeah, because the short notice of the apartment falling apart. Okay, <laughs> and, because of the you know. unlivability of the apartment. Yeah, and I presume, yes. of course, that your that your uh, legal stance on notice is that if it was unlivable, that's an exception right. to giving notice. I, I don't yes. have to live under these conditions. I wanted to see the videos you sent. Let's look at the videos. That's from the bathroom. The bathtub that's um, inside the closet, like the bathroom closet, butts up next to the um, the tub and shower. There's a hole there. Um, the pipes go leaking down into a hole in the floor where you can see through on to, into the hallway. Though He said he fixed, he just sprayed it with foam insulation and called it a day. This video here is the water leaking from the windows, which has caused mold all over the backs of our um, blinds and everything, like that's all the water. It's brown, nasty water. I don't know what it is or, yeah, that's all mold. We actually Googled Mr. Weiser and it came up that he's like 150 to $170,000 in debt for that whole property. For not paying his taxes on it. Right, so this whole, like that should say right there that He's just trying to get money and preying right. on people who can't afford to live in the area that we live in because right. $600 in this area is unheard of. Okay. You're not entitled to, you haven't proven to me that he has to pay for cremation. You're also not entitled to the security deposit for your new home. You know, if you, if you leave, you leave. Um, right. And you're not entitled to that. Your argument to me is 
I shouldn't have to pay. I shouldn't have to pay September and October that he's suing me for because this place was a slum, and right. uh, he exactly. breached the contract to me. And my question to you, Mr. Weitzer, what the heck was going on? I've now seen videos of running water all around them in the apartment. Well, I don't know about the running water in the apartment. Every time I would go in there, there was never anything dripping, including the ceiling. I was up to the apartment the day I don't care what happens when you go. There. I care that the problem get fixed. If they send you a video of dripping water, whether it's dripping the moment you go is irrelevant. You know it's dripping because they showed you proof by the video. Right. So there should be a competent plumber being sent there to figure out why there's so much problem, moisture. One. Oh, well, what kind of it problem was it? It was a plumbing it? problem. No, number one, it wasn't a plumbing problem. What kind of problem was it then? Because you it also said in your text, it's not a roofing there. problem. So what problem is it? Because there's running water. Did you see this video? Do me a favor, play the hall video. Can I talk your honor no, or not? No. Right now, I want you to see a video because you keep saying, well, I can't see those videos. I need you to see the video and then respond to it. That's what I need. What's that? When did this happen? Is this with the third floor? No, that's the floor to the hallway door that goes outside. Okay. When did this one happen? of the leaks that you know of. I don't know. I see all the texts where it's they keep notifying you. So I don't know why you don't know what's happening there. I think you do know the what's happening there. You I just don't want to know. I, I didn't see it was from the third floor over around their bathtub. Really? Okay. Let's do this again. Hold on. You responded <laughs> to the text. Yeah. How about this one? Let's take a look at this one. I want you to look nice and hard and tell me how you don't know that there's water flowing because they sent you this too. You gonna tell me you don't know there's water damage in this place? It's raining inside the apartment. Raining. No, How about this? Not, Wait, I need to make sure you can see this. Oh, you don't hear. <laughs> Listen to the rain. Listen to the waterfall. It's a water feature. This is the one I had to put the foam in because that's what the uh, plumber told me to do. I'm sorry. No, but typically the leak is, is fixed the first so that the, you don't just cover through. it up with chewing the gum and spit. The, uh, Mr. White, sir, you're not entitled to a single penny on your lawsuit against them. Um, their lawsuit against you for the reasons that I've already explained. Frankly, if you had withheld rent, I would have found you to be, you know, to be in a position to withhold rent. So even yeah. though every time service. And we didn't even. Thing, yeah, they don't have to give you 60. Mr. White, sir, you're running a slum. They don't have to give you 60 days notice if the place is unlivable. I just showed you video after video of stuff that is your responsibility to fix if you want human beings to live there. So, no, the, she didn't give you the appropriate notice. And guess what? They don't have to because the place was Wonderful. unlivable. I'm ruling in favor of the defendants. But on your counterclaim, for the reasons I've already explained, I cannot find in your favor. That's fine. Thank you. So the plaintiff fails to prove his case to the judge in a big way. The judge has found for the defendants in this case. Mr. Weiser, look, there are emails asking you to come send help. And you responded. But I yeah, do it took send days help, to but respond. they won't let help in. To help uh, <laughs> try can never get appointments. Bottom line is the judge really does feel like you're a slumlord. Anyway, you don't get any money. All right, uh, Mr. Mr. Club, Ms. Parsons, I'm sure you're thrilled to uh, not have to pay him any money, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> You're in a much better place now? Oh, yeah. Yes, definitely. All right. I'm surprised you stayed there as long as you did. Really, it's amazing. Yeah, us too. All right, thank you very much. <laughs> thank Con you. Congratulations. Okay, congratulations. You have prevailed. All right, good enough for you. All right, Harvey, that really was. That was a slum situation, wasn't it? Okay, Doug, well, what applies in this case, what underlies it is what we call in the law the warranty of habitability. That means that you can't have health or safety risks in the apartments that you rent. That is a truism in every state, even if it's not mentioned in the lease, that warranty is implied in every lease. What would happen if you bought a car from a small company and your payments go to them, not a bank or a loan company? 
and they go out of business, do the car payments stop? No. No. <laughs> there is a, the, the old thing that your parents used to tell you when you were a kid, there's no, no such thing, thing as, as a, a free lunch, lunch <laughs> is still true. And, right. and it will always be, be thus. So um, in that situation, your debt that you owe to Fast Eddie's loans or whoever they are that just went out of business. You, you know, one day they're gone, the building's gone, there's, there's a, hot a hot dog, dog stand, stand <laughs> right? And, and you know, it says that they're gone. So um, that loan to you is actually an asset of Fast Eddie's loans. Right. And what happens is they have creditors if they go out of business and they have people that they owe money to who kind of step into that place either through a bankruptcy court, through a trustee or through other proceedings. Or just by billing them and they or, still yeah. pay their bills. Yeah. So, But you got to still pay your bill. You absolutely still have to pay right. your bill. It's not going to go away. And this happens all the time. It's not that unusual. And the only thing you really can do as a consumer is you can demand proof that the successor really is the owner of the of the note of the of the bill now and they're not just some guy trying to scam. If there you. is a successor. I mean cuz there, right. there um there could still be a bank account for Fast Eddies. Right. And even though Fast Eddies is no longer incorporating right. because they've they've closed down their shop or whatever, there's still a bank account and right. that bank account belongs to Fast Eddie and you still owe Fast Eddie the rest right. of the money for the car that you right. bought from Fast Eddie. So pay your bill. Thanks for joining us. We will see you next time.